Hello and welcome to Hidden Truths. I'm your host, Johan, and this is a short mini-series where we dive into what conspiracies are. So that's what we're going to be covering in this episode. We'll also provide some examples of conspiracies, such as were the pyramids wireless electricity transmitters. We'll be looking into the Hollow Earth theory as well. And then we'll also look into cloning. So what is a conspiracy, you may ask? <laughs> A conspiracy is a plan set up by a group or government with the intentions of doing something secret, unlawful or harmful. Some examples of this are Bohemian Grove, which was unveiled by Alex Jones back in 2009. Um, there's obviously the Illuminati, which everybody knows about. And there's also 9-11, which is... I think, I think it's something like 51% of the US think that 9-11 was an inside job. So the first conspiracy we're going to be getting into today is the pyramids. And were they actually made to house the tombs of the pharaohs? There's lots of theories circulating about like how it was built, how this mega structure could have been built when um, the ancient Egyptians didn't have the technology for this. Um, and one which stands out more than others is the conspiracy of the pyramid actually being a wireless electricity transmitter. It might sound crazy, but when we get into it, your mind might get blown. Right then, let's get into it. The Pyramid of Giza is the only monument left of the seven ancient wonders of the world. It's fascinated humans for thousands of years, and the true origin of this anomaly is still unknown. The Pyramid of Giza is said to have been finished built at around 2560 BC. And to this day, mainstream media and historians will tell you that it was constructed with a simple pulley system. But to this day, there is no evidence of this ever being a thing. This is weird because this is what children are taught in school, despite all of the evidence that goes against it. The Pyramid of Giza also has a younger sister called Saqqara. This smaller pyramid is a lot less advanced than Giza and it's said to have been built over 2,000 years later by a much less advanced civilization, which is pretty evident because of um, the difference in detail between this pyramid and the one of Giza. The Pyramid of Giza was crafted with laser cut precision, but the Pyramid of Saqqara wasn't. This could possibly connote to the fact that a different, more advanced civilization constructed the Pyramid of Giza way before the one of Saqqara. Why is this the case, you ask? Well, a global cataclysm is said to have occurred between 11 and 13,000 years ago, and this world-changing event is said to have risen the sea levels by an estimated 400 feet. And if you look at the Sphinx, you can actually see water marks on the sides, which is, is just more evidence suggesting this theory. This world-changing event would obviously lead the civilization which constructed the Pyramids of Giza and ancient Egypt to have been wiped out, or it would have led them to maybe even leave for another planet. Mars is the most likely option out of all the planets in our solar system, as it's a very livable planet with an average temperature of 80 degrees Fahrenheit, but some of the deepest craters on the planet, such as the Hellas Impact Crater, can reach a much warmer temperature, which is thrivable for human beings. So, getting into the actual conspiracy that suggests the pyramid was an electric conductor. So we all know that the pyramids of Giza may have been more advanced than we all think, but to start this conspiracy off, we need to look into the other cases where power generation has been used but eventually forgotten. We know that Nikola Tesla and Thomas Edison brought electricity into common use moving into the 20th century. But when we look back to 1934 in Iraq, we can see that three artifacts were found together. And these just aren't any artifacts. A ceramic pot, a tube of copper, and a rod of iron, which combined with a liquid acid can be used to produce an electric charge. Known as the Baghdad or Parthian battery, these inventions date back to over 2,000 years ago. Ten years after their discovery, somebody using similar material and grape juice managed to produce the same reaction. This process has since been shown on the Discovery Channel on a famous TV show known as Mythbusters. The problem with this discovery is that modern day historians state that there was no evidence of this technology back in that time, which obviously isn't the case. Electricity can be generated by anyone that has four very common materials. So let's look at the materials used to construct the pyramids. Firstly, the pyramids consist of narrow laser cut tunnels that lead deep underground to areas that still haven't been discovered. Why you may ask, why are these tunnels like that? Because people clearly aren't supposed to go down there. What do you think the ancient Egyptians did? Crawled down there on their hands and knees? Absolutely not. Also, what tomb needs to have a shaft that's directed straight into the earth? Furthermore, the pyramid had a swivel door mechanism which was used to go in and out of the pyramid. It's also said that these doors were that well engineered that the 20 pound door could be opened with just the push of a hand. Pretty amazing how the Egyptians could do all of this if they weren't considered as an advanced civilization. 
Also, the Great Pyramids used to be covered in a bright white polished limestone material, which is known as a casting stone. These casting stones were positioned in a way that when the sun was at a certain height or angle, the pyramid would look completely smooth. This factor would have also been great for keeping the inner part of the pyramid completely insulated. But unfortunately, these casting stones are no longer there due to an earthquake in 1803 which caused the material to fall off the faces of the pyramids. Nowadays, the only remains of the pyramids are the inner stones, which are the main foundation of the whole structure. Also, real quick, why would the inner of the pyramid need to be so well insulated? This is something that's puzzled archaeologists for many years. Next up, dolomite was used on the inside of the pyramid. Dolomite is used to increase electrical condition depending on how much pressure it has on it. Also, in the deep passageways of the pyramid, granite has been used to construct the tunnels. Interesting. Granite contains a high amount of quartz crystal, which is a well-known conductor of piezoelectricity. electricity. This electrical conduction occurs when there's stress applied to the material. This method is used in lots of different modern day devices, um, watches being one of them. Granite is also known to ionize the surrounding areas which actually increase the conductivity of electricity. When electrons are given the chance to bypass sections of rock with the use of metal wire, large currents will be able to flow through the tunnels of the pyramid. Another material used to construct the pyramid was mortar, and half a million tons of it were used to create the Pyramid of Giza. Mortar is essentially like the cement that was used to construct the pyramid. This is the material that keeps the stones intact, and it's said that the material is actually stronger than the giant stones themselves, causing it to weigh more than them. Obviously, they used this material to keep the pyramids together for thousands of years, but could the material have been used for something else? All these materials I've just stated are used to produce electricity. Is this a coincidence? Maybe not. Also, northwest of the Great Pyramid is another anomaly known as the Serapium. This remarkable location consists of 20 huge granite boxes which weigh over 100 tons each. Classic Egyptologists will say that these boxes are just coffins, but the granite here came from 500 miles away. Also, each box is so large that it wouldn't be possible for them to fit through the passageways leading in and out of the Serapium. So how they got there is still unknown, and there's only speculation in, it, in the air at the moment. Moreover, electrical engineers will say that a container serving as a battery has to be made entirely of the same material, so there's no interruption of electrical flow in the object. Is it possible that these boxes could have been batteries? Absolutely. There is a centuries-old granite sarcophagus that has been put on display in an Egyptian museum, and it's thought that this is unfinished. Unlike the ones in the Serapium, this one has a giant crack down the side of it. Maybe this supposed sarcophagus wasn't unfinished, but abandoned because of the fact that the crack that's been there would have interrupted the electronic field, stopping it from achieving its intended use. Old-fashioned archaeologists will say that these were made simply to store the corpses of bulls. Not just ordinary bulls, but the bulls of the pharaohs. I believe that these pharaohs would have been as puzzled as us about these objects, and I think they had nothing to do with the actual creation of them. Some people believe that the Serapean is actually older than the pyramids, with some people believing that the Sumerians made these, which is an older and supposedly more smart civilization. To add to the mystery of the pyramids, a yet unexplored room was discovered in 1993. The room is said to have been deliberately hidden, and it's known as the Queen's Chamber. There's nowhere for people to get down there, so archaeologists use their remote control camera to find out what's in there. The typical person would probably expect to find a mummy down there of some sort, but people discovered the complete opposite. The room consisted of carefully placed copper wires, and there was also ancient writing on the wall next to it, which is said to be a set of instructions. When you look at the common battery, you can see that they consist of copper to create a chemical reaction known as potential difference. If you run an electric current through copper wire, the copper will produce a short-range magnetic field. Add a second copper coil and the electricity will transfer from one wire to the other. Unfortunately, since these wires have been discovered, they've gone missing. A man known as Zawi Hawass is known to actually have stolen one of lots of ancient Egyptian artifacts, and maybe he's the reason why these copper wires went missing. Most people will think the information I've spoken about so far is just a mere coincidence, and people will argue that an energy generator still requires a catalyst, and that's the reason why the pyramids are located above a powerful underground river. Physio-electricity could have been produced by this, and it's also been proven that thousands of years ago, the Nile rivers used to pass through where the pyramids are right now now. Right, so now let's get into the Hollow Earth Conspiracy. The initial idea is that the Earth holds a dark secret known as Hollow Earth. Protected by our governments, normal civilians aren't allowed to go there, and only elite members of society 
are allowed to visit it. How is it protected, you may ask? People believe that the Earth as we know it is protected by giant ice walls, and when you get to the North and South Poles, there are two giant holes that lead to this beautiful place known as Agatha. What's in this place? There are theories that state that aliens are living in the centre, and they're currently monitoring us right now. Some people also believe that the Nazis found this place during World War II after getting in contact with a being who reported they came from this place. One interesting story dates all the way back to the 19th of February 1947 when an American explorer known as Richard Byrd of the US Navy flew to the South Pole. When he came back he jotted down his findings in a journal and what was found has conspiracy theorists around the world pulling their hair out. Apparently the information within this journal held proof of the centre of the Earth. Skeptics of the Hollow Earth theory claim that Richard Byrd's notes have been misinterpreted, and experts say you can read through the notes and find a much more mundane explanation. A quote of what he apparently said is, The land beyond the South Pole is a secret place of wonder. What he is meant to have said is, I'd like to see that land beyond the Pole. That area beyond the Pole is the centre of the unknown. This was enough to trigger the thought in some people's minds of the Earth possibly being hollow. There are lots of other weird stories like this about of people flying into the centre and coming back out, people in boats in the in Antarctica going in there and coming back out and telling the stories to people, you know, back home. Um, scientists are completely against this theory, but who's to say that their opinions are better than anyone else's? Even governments are fueling this conspiracy with secret visits to the middle of the poles. Also, the ISS satellite in space seems to have taken some questionable photos of the planet in the past, and it does look like something fishy is going on in the Arctic. Only time will really tell what's going on beneath our feet. So next we'll get into human cloning. Human cloning is a much more recent conspiracy. This is the thought of people having identical body doubles, which have either been genetically engineered, they just look like them, or they've had surgery to look like, you know, a particular person. This conspiracy mainly relates to celebrities and politicians, as they lead very busy lives and don't want to have to deal with all of the fans and, you know, the fame and, you know, the paparazzi, the media, the, the press, etc, etc. Avril Lavigne is a great example of this, as she's reportedly been dead since 2003. Apparently she killed herself due to depression caused by all of the fame. According to this theory, Avril Lavigne apparently never died, and it's said that she's been using a body double this whole time named Melissa to distract the paparazzi from her. As crazy as this sounds, there's actually evidence to prove why people think why this new Avril is actually a clone. Firstly, there have been many hints left in her music post-2003, which is when she apparently killed herself, which talk about her not being who she actually is. Also, people have been pointing out the difference between pre-2003 Avril and the new one apparently called Melissa. This is because of the difference in their facial structure and because of the difference in their personalities. For example, people are saying that their noses are different, um, her cheeks are different, and people have gone as far to say that the dimples on the cheeks when they smile are actually a lot different. Furthermore, Avril never used to smile with her teeth, but now all of a sudden she does. Some people have come up with explanations for this by saying that Avril has just moved out of her emo phase and become a different person in terms of her spirituality and how she acts and what she believes in, you know, you know how she lives her life. But who knows? To get deeper into this story, the new Avril actually has a tattoo on her which says, you guessed it, Melissa. Another weird point is the fact that she hasn't been making essentially any music recently. Um, her last album was made in 2003. This isn't due to any of the stated conspiracies, but it's because she's been suffering from Lyme disease, apparently. We'll never know if she has been cloned or not, but recently she's released another album called Head Above Water. Maybe there's some hidden messages within it. Who knows? <laughs> 